Hello guys, this video is part of my brand new web scraping in Python using Scrapy and Splash course. So if you are interested in learning web scraping, make sure to enroll. I leave a coupon in the description box so you can buy it with $10 only. Now to get you a little bit familiar with XPath expressions, I created this HTML file. It's not something fancy because that's not the point. The point of course is to simplify the XPath syntax to you. So as you can see, I have defined two h1 nodes. One has the id attribute set to title and the other one without it. Also, I have defined two h4 nodes. One has the class attribute set to sub-title. And finally, I defined a ul element with four items on it. Now let's open this file in Chrome. I use an extension called open in browser. So right click on the HTML page and then open in default browser. But if your default browser is set to something else, choose open in other browsers and select Google Chrome. Good. Now to execute XPath expressions, we're gonna use the Chrome developer tools. So click on this icon and then more tools and then developer tools. The first thing you will notice on the elements tab, you can see the full HTML markup of our HTML file and if I hover over on any element, it gets highlighted on the page. Now, if I press Ctrl F, a new search box shows up. Basically, this is where we will test most of the XPath expressions we write. Now, if you remember from the previous lecture, I told you that XPath uses path-like syntax to select data from the DOM. So for example, if I want to select all the H1 tags using XPath, I can simply type slash HTML slash body, and then slash h1. In XPath terminology, this expression is called a location path that consists of one or more location steps. In our case, we have four location steps separated by a slash. The first slash indicates the document root, and from the root, I want to access the HTML node, and from the HTML node, I want to access the body node, and then I want to select all the h1 tags. So, in overall, this expression returned two h1 nodes. As you can see, it highlighted the first one, and if I click on this down arrow, it will select the second one. Good. Now, what if you want to get all the list items located in the ul element? Well, to do that, we can change our location path like this. From the body, I want to access the ul node, and from the ul node, I want to select all the list items. You can see that Chrome by default highlighted the first item. And if I click on this arrow down button, it will select the second one. However, if you want, for example, to select only the third item from the UL node, we can use what we call predicates. And predicates in XPath are conditions defined inside two square brackets. In our case, we want the third item. So I type two square brackets and then the index three to select only the third one. Another example that I want to show you is how to select nodes based on their attributes value. Let's say, for example, we want to select the first h1 node that has the id attribute set to title. So from the body, we want to select the h1, and then we're going to define a predicate between two square brackets. And to access the id attribute, we use the at sign, and then the attribute name id equal between two quotation marks title. Basically, this will tell XPath to select only H1 nodes that has the ID set to title. Now, I want from you to write the XPath expression to select the H4 tag that has the class attribute equal to sub-title. Take your time, pause the video. When you finish, come back to check the solution. Welcome back, hope you got it. So I'm going to change the h1 to h4, id to class, and then I'm going to add sub dash to the value. And that's it. Now the problem with the xpath expressions that we were using is that they use the absolute path, which means you have to know the exact path to the node that you are searching for. For example, to access this h4 node, we knew that we have to pass by the html node, and then the body node, and then the h4 node. 
However, we usually don't know the full explicit path node by node, especially in larger HTML files. Imagine you have an HTML file with 500 lines and the node that you are searching for is in the line 400. Obviously, you won't write the location path that consists of four location steps. So instead of this way, I'm gonna target nodes by their name only. Example, this location path can be converted like this. I'm gonna delete all of this and add double slash. This will tell XPath to look at the whole DOM tree starting from the root and select only nodes whose names matches H4. Now what I want from you to do is to rewrite all the XPath expressions we wrote and instead of using the full explicit path, use double slash and then the node name as I did here. This was a quick look on the XPath syntax. In the next lecture, we will explore more examples so you can have a better understanding on how things works.